we just thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you for the direction you've been taking us to deepen our walk with you. We just thank you, Lord. We just take your hand in the spirit, Lord, and we just say, Lord, take us. Take us further than we've ever gone before. In these times, God, one thing we do know is that we need to be close to you. We don't want to be deceived. We don't want to be fooled. We want to, we want to just know you, God, and hear your voice. And so, Lord... We just thank you, God, that today is a day of breakthrough in our walk with you, God. We're going to a whole nother level, and we just bless you, Lord. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. So last week we took a rewind. We went back to Revelation chapter 4 and 5 that Lori Ryder brought forth on the throne room. How many of you were blessed by that? Amen. We often think of the book of Revelations as a dark book, as a book about how everything is going to end and all the destruction. And, and I hope that through this series of intimacy, studying revelations through intimacy, we've changed our perspective. If you have been one who had a dark picture of revelations, kind of almost afraid of this book, that you will now see it in a different light. You see that it's really a call to go deeper. And it says clear in, these, in this Bible, this book of the Bible, that blessed is the one who knows this book, knows the instructions in this book, and does them. So we've been trying to find the instructions, not just about what is to come, but what God is telling us right now, today, in this world, in our life. Amen? And so I hope you've been um, growing and learning and, and that you love the book of Revelations now. And it's something to, to be positive about, something to grow in. And so here we go in Revelations 21 and 22. The last chapters before this, though um, Pastor Steve did a whole heap of chapters all lumped in once, all together. And um, it was more of a darker picture of, of describing the mark of the beast and describing um, the Antichrist spirit and all that would take place and a lot of Christians martyred. And... Um, the last couple chapters, though, are a beautiful picture of the age to come, the eternal reign of Christ. Amen? And so let's get into Revelations 21, 22. I'm titling this message, Renewal. Renewal. You know, in our relationships with, with one another, we go, a lot, we go through a lot of ups and downs, don't we? Marriages, relationship with our children, relationships with our friends, whatever it may be, we go through things in life, and the way we handle it doesn't always, we don't always handle it the same way. We have disagreements, we have conflict, and so there's often a time in our relationships that we need to renew those relationships. In marriage, we call it the renewing of the vows. We feel like after years, maybe we've drifted apart, we don't have the love that we once had, and we want to return. And so we, re we, we renew our vows. We've done that here at this church. At one time, we had numerous people renew their vows at one time. And so I hope that's our desire going into this new year, that we're recommitting our hearts to God. Maybe we've drifted in our love for God. Maybe we've been more caught up in other things and not on intimacy. And so if that's you, you know, make that your desire today to renew your heart, to recommit yourself, renew, take a renewing of the vows unto the Lord, amen? So here in um, Revelations 21, the first few verses, it says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old, old earth had disappeared, and the sea was also gone. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. So we see this picture of a new heaven and a new earth. You know, we have entered into a new year. And we live in a culture that likes to do new, you know, to replace things. When you have something that doesn't work anymore, what do you usually do? Do you fix it? No. You usually replace it. We like to do things, we want new things. We get into a new year and we make new resolutions. New things we're going to do. We're so focused on the new, new, new. And so when we think of a new heaven and a new earth, we think of a new heaven and a new earth. That this earth will be destroyed and a new earth will 
come forth. But if you really look at the word new and study it in the Greek, you'll find that the word new really means renew. There will not be a new earth and there will not be a new heaven. There'll be a renewed earth and a renewed heaven. This earth will not be destroyed. No matter what you've heard from whatever teacher, it's clear in the scriptures that we will not have a new earth. We will have a renewed earth. This earth will go back to the way it was in the beginning. When you've started something and you, you don't like the way it's going or you get tired of it, if you quit, what does that mean? It means you failed. Do you think our God is a failure? Our God is not a quitter and he never fails. He's not going to start over. He's just going to renew. That's what he's doing. We have many in our culture, we, again, love to, we, we quit real easy. We give up real easy. If we don't like our spouse anymore, we try to get a new one. Hello? We get tired of our job, we just might quit even before we get another job. If we're tired of our phone, we want the latest phone, so we get rid of it. Tired of driving the same car year after year, even though it still works, we just go and get another loan, get a new one. New, 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 new. But I want us our focus to be in 2021, renew. Let's stop replacing everything. Our God is a builder. He builds. He builds rather than replace. And God is doing a building. And so as we look into our this year, instead of doing something new, let's renew. And let's build on what we previously did. The best way to look at 2021 is to look back at 2020 and see where we've fallen short and make adjustments. So it's more of a readjustment than something new. So what readjustments do you need to make? So it's often not replacing, it's just readjusting so that what we already have can become better. Amen? God wants us to move from what? Faith to faith, from glory to glory. Everything is supposed to be getting better. Every year, as children of God, it's to be better. Our marriages are to be better. Our finances are to be better. Our children, we should expect them to be better. Everything to be better. Our job, we're getting promoted. That is the God that I serve. I've been serving, the God since, serving God since 1995, and I can testify today that all I've seen is things get better every single year. And that's how it should be for all of us. And all we got to do is walk with God, amen? We shouldn't see things getting worse, and we can't just wait till Jesus takes us home. No, things are getting better. And him taking us home is because things are now complete. So our God is a master builder. It's not a new earth or a new heaven. It is earth and heaven completely renewed, restored back to the way it was in Eden, paradise, before sin came into this world. That's what he's doing. And in that, as he has restored us, look at our, um, our ministry uh, minis mission statement. People restored and inspired, serving everywhere. All of us who are in Christ have been restored to God. And we who have been restored to God have been given the ministry of reconciliation, restoration. We who have been restored are called to restore. We who have been revived are called to revive. We who have been renewed are called to renew. That is our work on earth. We are working with God to restore the earth back to the way it was in the beginning. God's not coming to fix our mess. He is working with us now, and he'll come to complete the work that we have been doing. You get it? That's a kingdom perspective. That's a victory perspective, not a defeated perspective. We're not going to, he's not going to just 
in our defeat, come and rescue us. We are already in victory. And he's just going to complete the work. He's with us here in spirit. And there will be a day that he comes to be with us in the physical, where we'll see him face to face. But right now, he's still with us in the spirit. Look at what it says in Acts 3.21. Jesus is seated where? In heaven until the restoration of all things. So that means we have work to be done. So when we see the problems in the world, we're not to just complain about them. We're not just to say, woe unto them, and Lord, help us, Lord, take us home. No, we're to say, okay, look at these problems. It's our opportunity to solve them. Our job is we have the answers to the problems of the world. So when we see problems, we don't get caught up in it full of fear, full of worry, full of stress, gossiping and backbiting and complaining and pointing fingers at this political leader and that political leader and, and this pastor and that pastor or whoever we want to point fingers to. No, we say, I see a problem, God. What is the solution? And then as we ask God, God promises we ask him, we'll receive. And as we receive, now we have something to work with. So we're called, and we're about to go shift back into the issue series. We, we're doing the issue series before the intimacy series. But the issue series is not to focus on problems. It's to highlight a problem, just like Paul did in all his letters to the churches. But his focus was the solution. And that's what we're called to be as believers, is solution-oriented. What do you get when you usually talk with the people of the world? A lot of bad news, a lot of complaining. We're not to be like the world. We're to be different. Wouldn't it be nice to have friends that talk about good things, <laughs> not Debbie Downers? And that's how a lot of people in the world is. That's how the news is. That's how media is. That's how most of the things that people listen to are negative. We're called to be different, to bring positive messages. So many are caught up in what took place a few days ago. No, let's continue to be caught up in Christ. God is using all things for our good. When, when problems rise, when confusion takes place, this is our time to rise. It's our opportunity. I see this as what took place this week as an opportunity for the church. It actually excites me. I am thrilled. I'm not discouraged. I'm not fear, fearful. I am actually encouraged by it because I see the possibility of what God can do through us, his church. Change the way we think. Change the way you see things. Have an eternal perspective. Today we're looking at how eternal reign is going to be. But God wants us to have an eternal perspective now. Let's not wait till eternity. Let's step into eternity now. Let's look more into that. A foretaste. Look at verse 3 and 4. In verse 3 and 4 in Revelations, it speaks about this age when we step from the age of grace into the internal reign of Christ. What will take place? Well, it says, he will wipe away our tears. Death will no longer exist. Grief, crying, and pain will cease. Isn't that beautiful? How many of you look forward to that day? Many of us have shed tears, haven't we? Especially over this last past year, 2020. We've experienced pain. We've experienced grief. Let's not sugarcoat this. Let's not believe, you know, we're not to be so spiritual that we don't have feelings. We have feelings. We're to empathize with others, and we go through things ourselves. But yet at the same time, we're called upward. At the same time, we're called to have an eternal perspective. And so... We can have, in this age, a foretaste of the age to come. We believers will groan, but we have the Holy Spirit. Look at what Romans 8.23 says. We, too, wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, including the new bodies he has promised us. In other versions, it says we wake, wait with, and we can experience this foretaste. 
So we have a foretaste we can step into. What we see ahead, we can draw into the now through faith. So this wiping away the tears, you can expect through your intimate relationship with God for him to wipe your tears away. If you have grief and if you have pain right now, in the, in the age to come, there, no be, there will be no sickness or disease as well. You can, by faith, step into that eternal reign. You can grab a hold of it and bring it into your present life. That's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. But by faith, we can grab a hold of it, just like Hebrews chapter 11, the hall of faith. These people that some of the promises weren't even grasped yet but they walk towards it. And many of those promises were fulfilled. So we can expect God to fulfill what he's promised. So if you're sick right now, grab a hold of that eternal reign where there will be no sickness. Bring it down. Say in the name of Jesus, I am healed. If you're crying right now, let the Lord wrap his arms around you and wipe those tears away. If you're experiencing grief right now, be comforted by the Holy Spirit. If you're experiencing pain right now, let that pain cease through his love. That's the goodness of God. All we got to do is open up our hearts, op open up our arms to him. Believe. Let go and let God. Let him enrapture you. So don't be so much, you know, we are to... And it clearly says that in, in Revelations 21 and 22. To look forward to this day. To high, have high expectation for this day. To long for this day. But don't miss out on what God has for you right now. There is a foretaste. There is good things now. Amen. It's just like when you go to a nice restaurant. And you have an appetizer. The appetizer is not supposed to be as good as the main meal. But it's still good. It still gets you going. It gives you a foretaste of the better food that's to come. It satisfies you for now. You come in really hungry, and you get a little something to keep you until the meal has been pre properly prepared and it's ready. There is something being prepared for us. But in the meantime, we have an appetizer. And it still tastes good. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what does it say in Revelations 21.5? It says, and the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new or renewed. And then he said to me, write this down, for what I tell you is faithful and true. It repeats this again in Revelations 22. God is faithful and true. We can stand on that word. He is faithful and true no matter how you perceive things, how things may seem. God is faithful and true. He will fulfill what he's promised. Everything in the word of God will come to pass. This day that is coming will come. And his promises that are given to us even now will be fulfilled. He is faithful and true. In a world where we experience, how many of you experience unfaithfulness from other people? How many of you had people lie to you? In this world, we can expect unfaithfulness and lies, even from our loved ones, even from our close friends, our family members. They will be unfaithful and they will lie. But our God is faithful and true. The one person we can lean on and trust in, no matter what, to never fail us and to always be truthful is our God. So why do we run to so many other people instead of him sometimes? Why do we turn to people who we know are not always going to be true? Let's run to God above all else. He is faithful and true. Sometimes we even run to the prophetic, and it doesn't always come to pass. We run to the pastor, and they're not always there for us. But God is always there. He is faithful and true. He is whom we're to run to. Now after this, we see in Revelation 21, one of the seven angels came and spoke with John, saying, Come, 
I will show you the bride, the wife of the Lamb. He was then carried away in the Spirit. We can be carried away in the Spirit. How many of you want to be carried away in the Spirit? How many of you ever, you ever get tired of this world? And you just want to be carried away? Now, people turn to things in this world in order to, you know, dr drugs, alcohol, all kinds of substances to forget about this world. But the reality is it doesn't help them. It only makes things worse. And so when they come off their high, when they come off their, their, their drunkenness, their life is even worse now because of what they did while they were high and while they were drunk. But when we're carried away in the spirit, we get empowered. We get empowered to face whatever problem we're facing. So being carried away in the spirit isn't escaping. It's actually being empowered to face. Face the reality of what we're experiencing. So we need to be carried away because when God takes us up, he allows us to see things as he sees them. Because when we're not taken up, we often see things only in our natural eye, only with our own human reasoning. And we can be easily deceived. And so it's very important that we get taken up every single day, that we gain the high ground perspective. See, in order to have an advantage over the enemy, we have to be on the high ground. As long as we're on the high ground, the enemy can't take us down. We need to be on the high ground every day. The Bible says in Isaiah 41, for those who wait upon the Lord, what? They will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. We need to mount up daily. I'm telling you, there's deception on every side of every story. And we need to see things from heaven. And it's very important that we're not deceived. It's important that we're kingdom-minded believers, that we see from heaven. And so be taken up in the Spirit. So as John was taken up in the Spirit, what did he see? He saw the new Jerusalem. He saw this city coming down from heaven. And this city was unbelievable, nothing like it before. It was The streets were gold. He saw these huge walls. He saw these gems and beautiful stones. Go into Revelation 21 and see this big, this beautiful picture of what is to come. And in Revelation 21, 6, and also in verse 22, there's a call, and it's a call to all of us. And it says here in 21, 6, the Lord will give water as a gift to the thirsty from the springs of life. And in chapter 22, it talks about the throne of God. And out of that throne... And even in the new city, the new Jerusalem, here on earth, as it comes down, there will be this river that comes forth. And in this river is, the, is, is living water. And on the side of each of the river is the trees of life. And then the trees of life are the leaves of healing to the nations. And so, again, we can have a foretaste. Because the Bible says, out of, out of our bellies shall flow what? Rivers of living water. So in the spirit, we're connected to the throne of God. And as we go up, what happens? Out of our belly, we're connected to the throne of God as we go up. Out of that throne pours into us refreshing waters, reviving Restoring. How do we restore the earth? How do we bring revival to this earth? By being connected to heaven. By drinking of the river. As we drink from the river, the river begins to flow out of us. So I encourage each and every one of you to come and drink. As it says in verse 20, in chapter 22, verse 1, and he showed me a pure river of water, of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and the Lamb. That river is life. The life of God. Jesus said he came to give us what? Life. And life more abundantly. If you want the abundance of life, drink from the river. We can walk in the abundance of life in this age, in this life, at this time. 
All we got to do is drink from it. And if you're in need of healing again, what flows out of the river, we begin to flourish. We begin to produce fruit. And we become healed. And we become healing for others. We're in a world of people needing healing. Out of us flows healing. Out of us flows life. There is people dying in our world. There's people suffering in our world. But we get to give life. So when we go forth into our jobs, when we go forth into our schools, when we go forth into our churches, when we go forth into Walmart and, and the mall and wherever we go, even under the COVID, even under the restrictions, even though we can't be that near somebody, but out of us comes rivers. You might be still six feet apart from somebody, but rivers come out of you and you still touch them. Yes, we're to follow protocol and keep our distance, but out of us shall flow rivers. So some of you even here, we might, you might not feel comfortable coming to the altar, but right now, right where you're seated, right in your homes, rivers of living water, healing, deliverance, salvation, peace, joy, the love of God being poured in because it flows out of us. It's an amazing thing to be the well of God's water. Heaven is within. The kingdom of God is within us. We have a well. Where do you drink? Well, I, I don't, I can't go to church right now. You know, I, I need to be cautious. I'm, I'm high risk. You got the drink within you. To, it's right there. The well of living water is inside of you. Drink right in your home. Get filled right in your home. Let your home be filled with God's presence. Let your hearts be filled with God's presence. It's right there for anyone who, who would come and drink. Amen. And so the, the word of this year, I'm telling you, is renewal. 2021 is a year to press in for renewal. Renewed marriages, renewed families, renewed ministries, renewal, renewal, renewal. And how do we get renewed? By drinking that fresh water. You ever been hot? You've ever worked out in the, of course, it's winter right now, but we all know what it's like in the summer when it gets hot and you're outside working and you're sweating and it's, and you're dry and your mouth is so thirsty. And then you come and you drink and you're renewed. We can be renewed anytime in the spirit. Anyone who would drink. And in verse seven in chapter 22, it says, look, I'm coming quickly. The one who keeps the prophetic words of this book is blessed. And in verse 12, it says, a great reward is coming to the faithful. So I encourage each and every one of us, be faithful. Obey the word. And the word today is to come and drink. If we drink, that's where it comes from. That's everything we need. If you're thirsty, if you're hungry, drink, eat. And it's in the Spirit, the invitation, as it says in the last few verses. The voice of the Spirit says, come and drink. It is a gift. It restores, refreshes, and revives. So don't ignore the nudging of your heart. Don't ignore that still, small voice. Come on to me, the Lord says. Come on to me. Just like the Spirit said to John, come up, come up, come up. And the last verse in Revelations, as we close out with a song, says, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. Amen. As we drink, we take in grace. Grace, grace. What do we need more than anything? Grace. And grace has been given us. And all we got to do is drink of it to be renewed in his grace. So this closing song is called, We Thirst for You. If you're thirsty, drink. Amen?
perfect song for this word and father we just thank you lord we come unto that fountain lord if there's anyone out there whether online or right here that is having a difficult time drinking seems like that well is blocked there's blockage how do we unplug we repent there might be issues in our heart of unforgiveness of unconfessed sin these are only things that separate us, that block that well. But Lord, if we are, you're faithful and just. If we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness, to purify our hearts, to restore unto us that relationship with you, that we may drink again. So Lord, we choose to drink from that living water, from that fountain the springs of life flowing out of us. 
And Lord, we choose to go forth this week bringing life into this world, into our homes, into our jobs, wherever we may go, rivers of living water flowing out of us, touching everyone around us. And Lord, we give you glory. We give you praise today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Keeping our distance and keeping our masks on, if you do need prayer, please come forward. We'll pray with you. If you need prayer online, let us know who you are, and we'll pray right there with you. In just a couple minutes, our junior church will be live at 1010. I'm going to, um, it's on our junior church page of Facebook, but I'm also going to forward that onto our main Praise Tabernacle page. So grab your kids and enjoy the junior church message this morning. God bless you and have a wonderful week.